Hello my beautiful and lovely gamers, my name is Jonah and today we are talking about um, how or breaking down more likely how I uh, play Genji on how to stop a pusher. Now notice this is a diamond game, I'm on my Smurf Night Striker which you've probably seen when I play on stream. I'll link my Twitch down in the description as always including the Discord community server. Um, however, this is a breakdown of what I did. And I noticed that again my peak is 4.2k, that's what I've had placed this season, I think it's 4 2039 or whatever. Um, and therefore, of course, it's a way different thing. But again, I am mostly in high elos because of game sense over mechanics. So, this is definitely something that people can pull off, especially with some kind of luck. So, uh, before you always start a match, I always tell people that it's normally smart to have a couple of plants in your head after you know your team compositions and all that kind of stuff. So, for example, right, like so we see <coughs> over here, this is that banana, by the way, if you're interested, the link to their website down in the description. Um, but um, let's say, okay, so there's a uh, the main group here and there's my team here. So what I'll do is, okay, I'll think, okay, they will push, they will have to push through my choke. So what I, my goal is, okay, one, build an ultimate. That's my first choke. That's almost always what I try to do as a Genji, just build dragon play, right? First point is just to draw a time. That's really what first time. If you can full hold that stop, and of course we try to, to draw out as much time, try to full hold, but because it's so difficult, it's really about drawing our time and setting up my second point here so they have less time and i hopefully have a dragon blade ready to use so that's the first thing right i want to help my main group um, especially when i see they have a hog and so on i know that my main group is going to lack in damage so i want to help my main group by pressuring these two right as much as i can i notice that as much as i can as i have to also deal with these guys as my main group and my team isn't that good with it i'm expecting that my team can hopefully deal with the ryan and the hog Possibly, hopefully I can help a little bit to get some poking to build that ultimate, but in the end it's about taking out the back line. I'll do that by poking and harassing the back line, looking for an opportunity, and notice that I'll be looking for an opportunity. They have a very strong back line, they also have a, a break if I remember correctly. So, you know, there's there's a limit to what how aggressively I want to try to play this, right, because of the... Then the, the fact that going deep on their backline is scary. So what I'll instead do is I can I'll pressure and help my main group. If my main group get pushed back somehow, and the enemy sometimes start pushing in aggressively, that is when I want to go and strike. Especially in diamond where people are really bad at positioning, especially supports and backline heroes or whatever. This is when I want to start striking. Either by while these guys are going in, I'll attack their tanks, or even more likely, I'll just go directly for someone in the back line of the enemy team. If the enemy team isn't pushing and I can't shoot the, the tanks, I'll be harassing the DPSs and shooting them with shurikens, seeing if I can hit something, drawing some attention up to me, and in general just get, you know, an HP check. So if you hit them, you can see the HP bar, so I know, okay, can I dash this guy and kill him immediately? Can I kill him fast and so on, right? That is kind of what I'm looking for. So let's just break down what I, what, how I do, right? This is standard poking, right? Essentially just, again, getting that ultimate charge up and running, right? I bring it, build it to nine, 11% before they push down, right? He gets done, I immediately run in front of him, immediately pop my deflect. I know, again, this is important. If they, I know, it, because if I burn my deflect now, which I have, and the enemy team push through, right? Then I'm fucked because I, I need that deflect to actually attack their backline, right? It's kind of like one of my saving graces. So I would like to have that deflect to attack the backline with. However, because I have a Brig, I have a Saria, I have a Ryan, I saw they have a Hog, a Brig themselves, then it's like, okay, I think that my team can hopefully manage to suppress the enemy team and keep them back until I get my deflect back up, right? I know that after this push has kind of been denied, and it's really about I don't want my, my Ryan to take so much damage that he can just get rolled early, right? So it's kind of an investment to try that, but it's something that's worth noting for everyone else in Diamond that kind of is watching this and want to hit Masters. Right, again, this is the poking part, right? So, for example, there, because I did the HP check, I saw that Ana has no nade, right? Because of the highlighted McCree HP, right? So now I got a little bit of HP check on this guy. I kind of shot the, 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 uh, at these and yada, my Ryan got killed. Right, so, okay, cool. So, my Ryan died, so I go straight down and I try to essentially just kill... Okay, that's actually my bad. I try to immediately... Let me see, I need to minimize that. I need, immediately focus this guy. Essentially, one, checking his HP and so on. Try to pressure him. One, again, because of Blade. And two, because I don't want to be allowed to rush immediately, right? I want to just drag out the time and see what I can do and kind of give myself some options here. So I'll poke this guy, see if I, we can get a kill. We can't. I push aggressively. I start pushing the hog a little bit. Okay, now I'm 38, I'm, I know that, okay, I can probably build at least 60%. So now I'm setting kind of a goal that if we lose this, I want at least 
um, I want to end my ultimate charge on about 80 to 90 at least. That's like my, my minimum set goal that I kind of sitting in my own head that I think is viable, right? Here again, it's about pressuring and looking for kills. I'm jumping to see if I can maybe, if I could hit that guy with a shuriken, the McCree with a shuriken too. Hopefully I could go for a kill that doesn't really happen, right? And then I do this, right? The Ryan pushes in and I just climb over him to be able to collapse on the, the, as the supports and so on, they start pushing in. Then now I collapse and go for those guys, right? So I go for the creep because he took damage, so I immediately target him. Kill the Sinyala, this is just for mechanics, and then go for the Ana, and then back on to the Ryan, right? And that's it, that went pretty fast, but that again was my whole plan. I have been sticking to my plan, slowing down, bullying the tanks if possible, checking if I can maybe get a kill onto the support line, and if not, then I wait until the support starts pushing through the choke, and as soon as they start doing that, I will start targeting them. Just a quick note on that, and this is important, right? If the enemy team put like a support structure on him, so whatever the tanks have been pushing or whatever, right? It's not. It's important what happens in the choke, not what happens here. So just like, you can kind of almost just like ignore this, right? So it's important to note that if, for example, something like this were to happen, right? Then this story would be a little bit different because if I go for the Kree, I get you know I get double teamed here, right? So at that point, if it was something like that, then of course I would most likely or there's at least a big chance that I would either fight around this doorway and then target the McCree and then try to burst him like fight him behind this wall so that I couldn't get shot at by the support heroes and hopefully do a really quick burst so I would shoot around the corner and try to land a lot of headshots because again that's my mechanics that says that I'm able to do that and then burst him so fast that his support can't react I wouldn't be fighting him here so that they can shoot me or I would just be just saying fuck it if I don't feel I'm comfortable with mine and I would um, stay up here and I would either just harass the Sinyara, right, forcing the Ana to help him and then go for the McCree. Or I would harass and then heavy dive the Sinyara and hopefully kill him. And then there's a chance that I would either go straight back to the Kree or continue on to the Ana, right. Or just go straight back up here and then see w w how it goes, right. But anyway, I w I'm trying to cut off the supply of DPS, sort of the front line of the opposing team. Is pushing and doesn't right they're kind of like pushing but they don't have anyone to actually protect and play around them so they will slowly but surely actually be drained out. If Reinhardt alone on the objective hell even with a Roadhog isn't that difficult for me I can give them two attacks my Ryan will be respawning I can give them two attacks and I'll just be farming blade and be poking them I can kite around the Ryan and take him out for one one the things that are scary is the people with range that I can't kite so stuff like the McCree, the Ana, the Sinyala. So by taking out those, I'm really making this fight much easier for me. Of course, the Roadhog is a little bit of a problem. But I'm making this fight much easier for me. And again, worst case scenario, I build Dragon Blade and I win. And I hope that it kind of makes a little bit sense about how I like to think about stuff. Every map is, of course, different. Every fight is about different. But on defense, I like to use this kind of like focus attack, bullet tanks as possible, build Dragon Blade. And if as soon as they start pushing and so on, look for positions where the support normally will be alone or when the enemy team is pushing they normally ditch their back line because they're focusing on the front line that's very logical and then i'll go in and i'll take down that back line uh, or just harass them and see what what's good and then you know alternating between the tanks and the back line i hope that this helps if you want to hire me as a private coach as always it's video for two our session uh so just hit me up on discord i have a case now so i might be a little bit late to respond but we'll fix that no problemo it doesn't matter your rank if you're bronze or top 500, it doesn't matter if you, what, if you play on PC or console, it doesn't matter any of that. Besides, guys, I hope you guys have a happy holidays, have some good holidays, um, and I'll talk to you guys very, very soon. Love you guys very, very much. Please stay positive, take care of yourself, and as always, my name is Jonah. You guys keep the enemy in your crosshair.